Tremendously for your love, support, your consistency. Now let's go. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, DND Lamb, JJ Hawkins, um, at the Students of the Week, Sociology, Sophomore, Miami, Brandon Miller as well, Exploratory Studies, uh, freshman from Littleton, Colorado. They are the student athletes of the week, student academic athletes of the week. We like to just give that note because that's tremendous as well. Now let's go. How you doing, Coach? What's going on, Bob? You said it's a thin line between yeah, and yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We ask you a lot, I feel like, about the hate, but I was just curious if you felt the love. Oh, what that yeah. Means. I, first of all, hate is that comes along with the territory. You know that. Um, the love has been tremendous. Like, like I reiterate every week. Just. Walking out there to a packed stadium, seeing the pandemonium around the city and your friends and family members just coming in, explaining to you what it's like to come through the airport to Denver with all the Colorado apparel on and, and driving into the stadium for myself, seeing all the ethnicities, you know, in, in, in unity. And I, I love it. So the love nationally, even from the celebs that you see and the ones that are in the luxury boxes that you don't see, uh, it's tremendous. And the faithfuls, and you know, I have the absolute utmost respect because they believe, and you all believe, in the group here as well. Not all of you in here believe, but you know, <laughs> maybe 85% of you believe. Hey, Coach, Brian Hill. What's going on, boss? Um, I don't know if you believe in this room, is being battle tested, but you guys have been through you know, really tough first five weeks. How valuable is those is the first five weeks? Well, every every game is a value. Every game is a value. Every game is 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 that that you learn something or you glean something from, from, or a player allows you to know who they are, good or bad, or indifferent. Coaches um, reveal themselves also, as well as guys that's trying to earn a position on special teams. So we, we learn and we glean a lot every week. It's up to us to put these players in the right situations and uh, to take what we learn and we glean every week to put it on top of this week's game plan and prayerfully do right by it. We gotta do right by it. We can't just do the same old stuff we've been doing. We gotta, we gotta receive it for almost 200 yards, Mario, right? We gotta get him the ball. Right? We got to get 10 the ball. We got to get five the ball. We, we got to deal it. Come on. We got to get dealing the ball. We got to do the things that helps us win and, and put our defense in the right situations as well. But those guys got to, uh, they got to make plays. Hey, Mickey. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good. How are you? Thanks. Uh, Nick Edwards, U Sports Report. I'm curious on how Travis Hunter is feeling. Travis is doing well. I'm sorry. I always jumped you guys um, <laughs> because I'm, I'm excited. How Travis Hunter is feeling and when you expect him. Travis is doing well. He was out of practice today coaching his butt off. He's one of the best coaches we have. Um, and uh, he, he's on, uh, shoot, Kamadi, he's on his butt. He's on his butt day in and day out. And Travis is, i say, maybe a week or two, two in the last, uh, let's say two or three. It would be my dream and desire for him to stay out until after the bye week. But I know Travis, he's going to want to. You know, because he's going to see Shiloh most likely as a chance of possibility of prayer that you may see Slusher. You may see several, you know, starters of that secondary that's supposed to be in there. And I know he's going to want to join. But I, I would love him to be out until the bye. That gives him a, like three extra weeks. Uh, Hi, Coach Adam. Let's retire 24-7 sports. Uh, Cameron Silman Craig's been on this journey with you for a little yeah. while. And he leads the Pac-12 inter interception. Is right that now. awesome? Any is that, is that, hold on, hold on. You, you can't just run past that. Like, <laughs> like, didn't this guy come from Jackson? Yeah, don't, the, the HBCU guys, they don't supposed to be able to play at this level, right? And he is, he is balling, man. I mean, I, I, I've coached him since high, since high school. He's nothing but a, a, a classy individual, does his schoolwork, yes sir, no sir type of guy, come from a great home, a great family. 
um, loved his loved his siblings. I mean, he he is a good football player and a good person, man. I'm so proud of him. I don't know what to do. Does he have some unique qualities that he's a dog? He's go getter. He, he don't play hurt. Like if he's hurt, he's hurt for real. Because you got to pull him off the darn field. Um, always wants to practice. Works his butt off in the weight room as well. Just a, a great kid. He he's when you say smart, tough, fast, disciplined with character, he is all of that. He checks every box. And I'm proud of him. Okay. Hey coach, Jake Schwartz, the NBR. How you doing? Doing great, sir. How are you? Excellent. Uh, just curious if you have any history with uh, Coach Dillingham and just your thoughts yeah, on Yeah, yeah. Got great history. Um, I don't know if he wants me to tell this story, but I was assembling uh, a staff once upon a time. I'm not going to tell you who for what, but he was a part of it. And we communicated quite a bit. And I was happy with every step that he's taken because I know he's that guy. I know he's been more than capable. So when I saw him get this opportunity, I was ecstatic. You know, then we saw him at the, I think, the, saw one another at the Pac-12 meetings. And that was like, yeah, that embrace was, was, was awesome to me because I know his client and I know what kind of man he is. And uh, he is great for their program. He's great for college football. He's a tremendous mind, um, offensively, tr tremendous mind. But he's, a, he's gonna be a great head coach, man. So I have the utmost respect and love and admiration for him. Because we were going to work together at one point. Thoughts on the ASU film that you see? Excuse me? Thoughts on the ASU film? I mean, they play tough. They don't give up. It ain't no quit in them, of course. I mean, that's who, who he is. Um, they're, like us, they're, they're building something that's going to be tremendous. You just got to keep watching the story and see how it unfolds. But uh, you can't take a team like that lightly whatsoever, negate the records, negate all that nonsense, and understand this team is building something, and they're going to be phenomenal. I, b I believe in Coach Dillingham tremendously. Coach, Matt Smith, 104.3 The Fan. Yes, sir. You know, we don't get a ton of time to talk to you, but I wanted to ask you something off of that, kind of broad strokes. What is your opinion on the NCAA and the way that universities handle punishment, right? For instance, with what, what ASU. What type of punishment? Well, for ASU, how they have the self-imposed postseason ban this oh, year. Oh, what? what? What happened? Well, there were I'm sorry, issues. guys. I'm so locked into this. It, it's all good. It's, all good. it's just more of a broad strokes thing that there, there are situations where, for fear of further repercussion from the NCAA, right. schools will self-impose bans yeah. based upon history rather than what's happening with the current student athletes. I, my mom used to hand out whoopings, you know, back in the day, right? So if I did something stupid, you know, I was like, Mom, you know what? I don't even want to go to the game tonight. I, I'm, I'm not even going because I know that would lessen the whooping, all right? So if that's what they're doing, I understand. <laughs> because I've done that before. Gotcha. Like, Mom, I ain't going to the fair. I'm good, all right? You ain't got to spend no more money on me. I'm straight. No, you come on in and go get that belt. Right. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, the, 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 the one question I wanted to ask is we got a chance to talk to Shador about it after the game, but we didn't talk to you about it. Okay. Just your thoughts on the last six minutes, and you only had one timeout. You get the ball back yeah, at 5.58. Yeah. Well, just, just your one thoughts on time, your One at a time, one at a time, one at a time. I'm old, 56, no I just look good. Um, we had one timeout because we had exhausted on foolishness of uh, personnel, um, mm -hmm. special teams, personnel, defense. Um, I'd rather take a timeout than risk six points, not having 10 people on the field. So not having enough time, I understand that. Because in those moments, the now is more important than the future. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't take care of the now, you're not gonna make it to the future. So that's how I went about that. But it's foolish, it's foolish stuff. There's things that we went over this morning in our team meeting. We can't uh, dismantle ourselves with that foolishness of personnel. Mm -hmm. We gotta know that. We go over that stuff every Friday. If somebody goes down, the next guy up, but we can't have the coaches going to find somebody. Sure. When that guy goes down back in the day, when little Timmy at the end of the bench, if he wanted to play, he was ready. He couldn't, that guy went down, he ran out there. And we sit up there waiting to be located. And I don't understand that. You gotta want that stuff. So that was the, the timeouts. But just, yes, sir. just the, Shudor was talking about how he checked into a lot of those runs. And yeah. Situationally, you need two scores there. True. What, he, did you like the way you handled it? Or maybe would you change some things uh, going back and looking at the film? Let me see, let me see. Shador. 262 and three touchdowns in the second half. Quarterback rate is 441. Leads the nation. Fourth quarter, he's completing 79%. Um, quarterback rate of 222. And you think I'm going to change anything about him? 
No. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Fair. I would take the good and the bad. Okay. I take it. He knows what he needs to do. He knows what he needs to work on. Sean, go ahead. Coach, I'm just curious. You know, your focus, like you said, you don't listen to – you listen to some noise, I think, but you don't listen to all the noise that comes in. What do you say when people are like – local people here, Buffs people say, Dion for life, man. How can we get this guy to a lifetime contract? How do we keep him and keep if, what we got? If I listen to that, I'm going to have to listen to this. You can't choose that and not accompany it with this. So either I'm going to be in it or I'm going to be out of it. That's a wonderful gesture. I love it. But I'm smart enough to know and old and wise enough to know that that can flip on you instantaneous. The fan only blows when you're hot. My mama said that, not me. So if y'all want to be mad, get mad at my mama. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, in the off season, during the recruiting cycle, yes, sir. Lamar and Miller was a noteworthy name, but you mentioned on Saturday that you had not seen a ton from him in practice. Was Saturday confirmation of what you saw in recruiting? Uh, well, we see a lot of things in recruiting, but you got to understand, this is a tremendous transition from a high school guy being the guy, and everywhere he walks in the hallway, people are clapping. Ain't nobody clapping here unless you do something. That's just the nature of the game and the nature of the land. And the thing that those young guys have going against them, and you got a pro quarterback that's not going to tolerate foolishness and not going to tolerate drops and not running your route at the right distance and not getting all the checks. That's That cripples young kids. I mean, you rarely see youngsters that are prominent with a, I wouldn't say veteran, but a, a, a poised quarterback, even in the NFL. That, that's, that's tough. But for him to step up, even though he didn't practice work with the darn last week, um, to step up. I, I challenged him uh, yesterday, and I got a, a, a dear friend that called me and summoned me to get him on the phone to FaceTime. Wanted to talk to him and wanted to let him know that he has a tremendous gift. And I don't know what the conversation was, but I know I just handed him the phone. I said, somebody wants to talk to you. He looked at the phone like, oh, my God. Yeah, it was Snoop. <laughs> Snoop wanted to talk to him. He, he, he wanted to challenge him, and I challenged him about it's one thing when, when they don't expect nothing. Now all of you expect something. So you're going to be on his, on his butt, on his back, you know, with your hands around his throat. Like, come on, we want to see what we saw against USC. So to prepare with the expectation is tremendous. That was our word of the day, expectation. We defined that. We talked through it. And uh, I made a point that it's not the expectation that others have of you. It's the expectation that you have of yourself. That should matter the most. Thank you. How you doing, sir? I love all the veterans, all the regulars. I mean, I appreciate you guys, man. And your accomplishment, many great things here is to see you with attendance and wins and all that. I guess you had that moment with Travis and Henry, um, yeah. a character moment. I guess yeah. above all, above everything else, how do you coach character? And do character wins like that mean more than anything? Well, you recruit character, and you uh, you try to lead by example with character. Um, you know, many people wore a bracelet years ago, what would Jesus do? Um, even though you don't have it around your wrist, you should have it in your heart. Um, and you gotta think of that person that you really look up to the most. What would they do in that situation? Hopefully that's parents or, or uh, grandparents or loved ones. So we, we recruit character we try best to recruit character, but sometimes we miss. And then we have to dismiss character. And you guys get upset about it, and you guys get all flustered about it, but you don't understand it's not just talent. Oftentimes it's character, because you got to get those kids out of your locker room where they were poisoned a whole bunch. Like, I pay attention to everything. Like, when we get our butts kicked on our sideline, I want to see who wasn't with it. Who wasn't in it. Who had already given up? Who had already shut it down? Who was ready? Who was standing up to the challenge? Who was ready to go get it? Who was ready to, 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 to fight? I watch all of that because that tells you more about your team than anything they can do on the field. So I look for those type of intangibles. Great question. Hi, Coach. Troy Finnegan, CU Sports Report. You're always in the national spotlight, but this upcoming game has a little bit of a different feel in the sense that it's less talked about, less in the spotlight than the previous five right. you played. Do you even 
Notice that? Does it make a difference? We, we, could, we could care less. I mean, I, we're going to be on somebody's television, I promise you that. <laughs> we're going to be on somebody's television, and we we got to go out there and exceed the expectation. We really do. It, it doesn't matter if we're on a national stage or not. We, we're national. We People understand that we're here, and they understand that we're coming, and they understand that what we're building. So we just got to have a consistency and a continuation, um, especially early on. The challenge and the goal this week, we got to win the first and second quarter. That's the challenge, and that's the goal. We're going to win the first and second quarter. Hi, Coach. Ron Scholes with Ralph Report. What, Ralph Report? Mm -hmm. Okay, I ain't no Ralph had a report. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, got it going on. Ralph does. Yeah, so you mentioned that Travis has been one of your best coaches, and we saw him yeah. coaching Omarion and Formani on the sideline last week. Is that something that you kind of instructed him to do, or is no. that something that he took upon himself? You don't instruct dogs to be dogs. That's just who he is. I mean, I don't know if you watched, or you guys are not in practice, but Shador, after a pass play or whatever, he's always coaching the receivers, even sometimes in the game, saying this, this, and this. So, those type of guys, that's who they are. That's what they do because they want everyone to come up. You know, when everyone comes up, we're, we're better as a whole. But Travis just took it upon himself to, to do what he does. That's what he does when he's on the field. He's challenging that other corner because he knows that other corner is going to get a whole lot of balls. They really are. But I, I'm loving what I'm seeing, man. I, I You know, when Kamani get his thing together in its totality, and mentally, you know, ready to, to compete every single play in Travis and Shallow, shoot, Slusher, be back. I mean, come on, man. Come on. Like, this this is something, it's going to be something to behold in the secondary. Okay, two more. Go ahead, Brian. Two, uh, two questions for you. Yes, sir. One at a time. Uh, Savion Washington, is he going to be back at some point this year? I, I, yeah, this year, yeah, but not this week for certain. Um, not this week. But I tell you what, man, that, that young man played his butt off. He was in tears on the sideline because he couldn't go back in. And uh, I know Pastor Smith prayed with him on the sideline, and he told me the next day how much that meant to him. Uh, great kid, been fighting his butt off. We had another private meeting we had with him last week to just take that ownership of that offensive line and make it his. And he was fighting his butt off. And uh, he's one of the kids. I, I adore them all. But he has a special place in my heart because he really wants it. He really does. And the second question for you. You were very uh, complimentary of the special teams before the season. You were excited about that group. Yeah. How surprised are you that they've struggled as much? No, we hadn't been special. It's just a little play here and there, a little bonehead play. I mean, Mono was supposed to kick that field goal. You all know that. You know how much I love my Mono. He hadn't missed him. He had an extra point block, but he had missed um, as well as the punt. We just got to just punt the darn ball. We don't need to rugby style this thing. <laughs> punt the darn ball. They top return. It wasn't even in the game. So those are just little things that we can fix, but we can fix those instantly. We just got to fix them. All right, let's go. Aaron, we'll see the night news. Uh, are you going to stop introducing yourself every day? I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know you. I know you. Thank you. For, uh, well, you know, for the, for the stream, for everyone else, so okay. they know the voice, so there they know go. who's asking the questions. Uh, first of all, how is Shiloh doing? Shiloh's doing great. He's back on the practice field. Good. And he's back on getting on my nerves, so he's he's <laughs> taking over every step up. So he's back on the bottom. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Not necessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't I can't say that. I can't okay. say that. No, sorry. My other sons would they would they would yeah that wouldn't go well in my house if I said that. <laughs> um, yeah, Shell and I were talking about the rankings the other day when I yeah. talked to her. By the way, she she was very happy that she had moved up in the rankings. Um, she didn't pass a fitness test, so she's not up okay. there in the rankings. So back on the yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I'll have to have a word with her. Back to my actual question. Um, you talked about expectations. Yes. Last week was about expectations. Um, what is this? What, what are the expectations for this next game, and where do you expect this team to go on the road? Well, last week wasn't about expectations. Last week was about winning. This week is more about expectations than, than many of the other weeks because that's the expectation that we have of ourselves to go in and win this game. You want to win every game, but I mean, you really expect to win some games a lot more than other, others. Um, this game, we, we, we expect to run the football. We've shown that we could last week. We expect to throw the ball successfully. We've shown that we can um, in its totality during the whole season. Um, we've shown that when we take something away, let's dedicate to taking something in the way, we can stop the run. Yeah, they got a couple bounce out, and the guy made an incredible run. That was an incredible run. Other than that, you take away those yardage, we did a pretty good job of them stopping the run. Um, expectations is to, to shed 
the big plays down, the scramble plays, but they break contain, and uh, the kid did a great job. That's why he won the Heisman Trophy last, last week. But if we stay in our zones and, and stay with our man, we, that doesn't happen. So the expectation is to do your job for the four to five seconds that that play involves you. So our expectations of ourselves are a lot more lofty than expectations that you may have of us. But we have tremendous expectations for this season. And uh, we, we're we just getting started with it. We really are. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. God bless everybody. Thanks, Coach. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Coach.